Hey guys, welcome to today's lesson. Today we're just moving one step further than the gradient uh, sort of lesson where we use the, um, the m equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Okay, and we're going to deal with gradients and perpendicular and parallel lines. So first of all, what I'm going to do, I'm going to sketch up a little uh, a Cartesian plane there. All right, I'm going to sketch up the graph of, let's say, y equals x. All right. And I'm going to look at a line that perhaps might be parallel to that. Now, what does parallel mean? Okay, well, hopefully you, mean, you remember that parallel means that they're never going to touch. Now, if they're never going to touch, that means that their slope will be the same or their steepness will be the same, which hopefully you recognize means that their gradients will also be the same. Let's say it's y equals x plus 2, for example. All right. So the first thing that we're going to learn today is that when you have parallel lines, I'm going to try and stop using that color because it's hard to see. Um, when you start using it, looking at parallel lines, we can derive the little property that m1 is equal to m2, which means that their gradients are the same. Now that becomes quite handy um, because you'll get questions like this, um, a nice simple one, um, x plus y plus 2 equals 0, and they might say find the gradient of the line that is parallel to that one. And you're like, okay, well, if it's parallel to this line, let's find out what this gradient's going to be. It's going to equal negative x minus 2. Therefore, this gradient will equal negative 1. Ah, oh, therefore, the second gradient will also equal negative 1 because their lines are parallel. Now, of course, we will take this further after we've done some more questions around the equations of lines. Um, but certainly at the moment, we're just looking at can we find the, the gradient of a line that is parallel? to another line. Nice and easy, okay? Not a hard concept to understand. Um, the next one is a little bit more complex, and that's looking at lines that are perpendicular. So again, I'm going to sketch up a little Cartesian plane as best as I can. All right, I'm going to use um, the same line, y equals x. Now, that doesn't quite go to the origin, but let's just imagine it does. That's y equals x. Now, can you remember what does it mean if two lines are perpendicular? Well, hopefully the answer that you give is that they meet at 90 degrees. Now, think about when we're looking at surface area and volume. For example, the area of a triangle, half base times the perpendicular height. It's the height that has a right angle. So it means that these two lines will meet each other at a right angle. Now, that suspiciously looks like the graph of y equals negative x, and it certainly is. Um, and we're going to use these two graphs to show a particular property. Now, the property I'm looking at is if I multiply their gradients together, they're always going to at or give the same response. So in this particular case, the gradient is negative 1, the gradient is 1, so negative 1 times 1 equals negative 1, which is our property that we can deduce for all lines. Now obviously that's not y, but this is what we need to remember. Okay, now you are not given this fact, so you need to remember this. So again, the, the important part is for perpendicular lines, that if line, two lines are perpendicular, it means they meet at 90 degrees, that when I multiply their gradients together, they'll always give negative 1. Now, we could look at another question. Let's say, for example, um, let's say, for example, we're given the equation of what, y equals, uh, let's say, 2 thirds x plus 4. Okay, let's try and use this little formula. Now, if we use m1 times m2 equals negative 1, then m1 is 2 thirds times m2 equals negative 1. I'm going to times it by 3. I'm going to divide it by 2. We get m2 equals negative 3 on 2. Now, I want you to look at those two numbers that I've boxed. The gradient of the first line, the gradient of the second line. I'm going to do another one. y equals negative 2x plus 3. Well, that means if I use m1 times m2 equals negative 1, we get negative 2 times m2 equals negative 1. I'm going to divide by negative 2. We get m2 equals positive 1 over 2. Now, if I do the same thing, I'm going to circle the half. I'm going to circle this negative 2, but I'm going to put it over 1 as a fraction. Can you notice anything now? 
hopefully what we're deducing here is that not only when I multiply them together that they give negative 1 but because I'm dividing by that second one what it actually gives you is what we refer to as the negative reciprocal uh, now that's a really handy thing to remember because if you know two lines are perpendicular we simply need to reciprocate the uh, gradient and throw a negative in front of them okay so let's have a quick look at something uh, let's say we've got the lines um, y equals 2x minus 1 then we know that the gradient okay of the line that's perpendicular to this is going to be negative reciprocal negative a half if I know I've got y equals negative 3 quarters x plus 2 then if I want to find the perpendicular line we know that it's going to be negative well it's already negative so it makes it positive 4 on 3 so really quickly we can start finding gradients that are perpendicular um, just as well we can also say that if the lines are parallel the gradient is 2 and the gradient is negative 3 on 4 so it can be really quite handy to know these two facts so finally I'm just going to recap all right for us um, that if we know that two lines are parallel then we know that the gradients are the same if we know that we have two lines that are perpendicular, we know that their gradients will multiply to give negative 1, or otherwise known as they will be each other's negative reciprocal. All right. Um, we'll get stuck in next lesson to the more applied questions, and these are the harder ones where we'll use all this information together to find the equation of different straight lines. I hope that made sense. You now have three ways to find the gradient. You have the parallel lines, we have the perpendicular lines, and we have our two-point formula of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, and of course you have it from the actual equation of the line itself. Have an awesome day, guys. Make sure you stick around for the next lesson on finding the equation of a straight line.